Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So Sue here. So you're probably wondering what are you doing in a wood? Well you can see that little path behind me. That path actually leads down to um, what's known as the mass rock and as you know in penal laws people weren't allowed to hold a mast, priests weren't allowed to say mass and um, many priests were executed and murdered for doing so um, so I'm going to bring you down there and show you the area. Now you can see as well on that path um, it said that no ferns will grow on the path but yet we have loads of ferns in the wooded area so a little bit strange. But after we visit the Mass Rock, I'm going to bring you down the road to this tiny little graveyard. I believe there's a ruins of a church there as well, but also a bridge. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get there. So this is the pathway down to this Mass Rock. Now, as you can see, it is a perfect pathway with just leaves and trees aligning it. But look at the amount of ferns that surround it but yet it said that they don't actually grow here and um, it is extremely mucky and I'm probably not wearing the correct gear but uh, we will keep going nonetheless now as I said there's a mass rock down here so the congregation would meet here in secret and the priest would say mass but as I said down the road there's a bridge and the bridge is known as the bloody bridge and um, a priest was actually uh, caught for saying mass now what he did was he um, went down to this bridge and he hid underneath the bridge but unfortunately the Cromwellian forces the soldiers uh, discovered him I believe he coughed and that's how they discovered him the center hounds in and he was shot dead now there's also the story that he is supposed to haunt the area and as I said it's known as the bloody bridge but I'm not sure we'll see it today but I have seen it in the past um, the stones under the bridge and in the lake there are red and the story is um, it's his blood that are on the stones so very very sad but it did happen I mean I have videos on my channel, St. Oliver Plunkett, he was executed for, um, you know, believing in his Catholic religion. Nan O'Nagel, another lady um, who used to, in secrecy, teach the Catholic religion and, you know, fed the poor as well. So it's going to get a little bit denser here and then we'll come out to this beautiful mass rock but just have a look so you can just imagine all the people coming down that pathway in secrecy to listen to the priest who said mass so um, as I said I'm going to bring you down it's not really a lake I suppose it's a river or a stream maybe but at the moment we've had a lot of rain so it's probably murky and dirty and I'm not sure we'll get to see the, the red stones but I can assure you I have seen them. Um, they're kind of like a rusty red as we try to make our way through here. Um, but it is a very, very sad and an interesting story and it's part of history. So I'm going to pause the video while I make my way through here. And uh, hopefully when I turn you back on, we'll be out on this beautiful mass rock. Right, so we're just coming to the open area of the mass rock. Now look at this, guys. This is actually stunning. So can you imagine the early 1700s, maybe? The congregation... The villagers coming here to listen to the priest who said mass and we are actually standing on rocks um, I don't know whether you'll hear it but just way down there the river or the stream it, it sounds actually like it's, it's going quite fast down there it's flowing quite fast it runs the whole way 
down along down that way down towards this little um graveyard that i'm going to bring to bring you to and the little it's kind of like a humpback bridge where he hid and of course unfortunately he was murdered for um saying mass and preaching the catholic religion now i'm probably not going to be able to get down through there you can see all that um, they are actually if you get <laughs> they're really really spiky they're really really uh, the thorns on them i can't remember i think it's just brush but uh i'm not going to make my way but there's a slight path there still people come um it's just another little opening area um the priest actually i was told that the priest would come up through here rather than through the the woods so maybe that's the way he went when uh, he was discovered and followed the the river down and then into the little um humped back bridge and hid but unfortunately met his um at his end and was shot dead so grave visitations actually has a story as you know grave visitations he has a channel as well but he's just going to tell you the story that you know of a similar um you know mass rock down in tom haggard yeah so there was a father back in 1653 there was a father nicholas mailer parish priest from tom haggard and he was killed on christmas morning 1653 while celebrating mass himself and the parishioners had secretly gathered for mass in the corner of a field on the Devereux farm after the village church had been destroyed by Cromwellian soldiers. So a stone from the ruin of the church was brought to the field and was used as an altar. And they were called mass rocks. So and another part of that story then would be um, that the priest, when he was murdered on Christmas morning, um, the bystanders or people who were there for the mass on the same morning on Christmas morning, they actually grabbed the chalice and wrapped it up in in um, cloth and threw it into the river to hide it because they thought the soldiers would have destroyed everything. So they did go back and find that chalice in the river when the soldiers had left the area. So that chalice is actually still in the church today in Tom Haggard Church. Wow. And it can be seen there. And, and you did you were you did the Tom Haggard's old cemetery, and his grave is there, is yeah, it? Yeah, he's buried in Tom Haggard um, old graveyard there. I done a that video way back, if you remember that one. It was kind of up on a hill. Yeah. Across from the, the grotto, the grotto beautiful area. grotto, yeah. Um, and Tom Haggard, yeah, but he's buried there, and it actually says on his gravestone as well. Yeah. He was. And I killed. actually think that. Um, they still hold um, a service, maybe around Christmas down at that Mass Rock. Yeah, like every year they have. I a, think so. Yeah. To get together yeah. to remember. To remember him, I suppose, Father and Mailer, yeah. to, to Father remember. Mailer, and then I suppose just the tough times that Ireland went through. Uh, the Cromwellian forces, as you all know, burned down lots of our little churches, and um, they just weren't allowed to say mass. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's it's sad, but I mean, we have lots of stories on both of our channels about such things. So this is the path that we have come through. And then, as I said, this beautiful, and I mean, it is a stunning area. Look at that for a view. It is absolutely beautiful. I hope you can hear the river that runs just down. I mean, it is quite, a, a, I, we can't show you now, but years ago when I visited here, um, I used to just come here for walks. There wasn't so much of that uh, brush and uh, you could see kind of right down. It was quite a big drop and that's where that river um, runs. But um, I'm going to go on the road now and I'm going to bring you way down there to the little cemetery down there and show you the bridge as well where the priest lost his life. So we're slowly making our way back up and we were just talking about these people that had no fear really that they believed so much in uh, their Catholic religion and uh, I believe sometimes the Protestants were persecuted for their religion as well. Sorry Grave, you're going to have to <laughs> GV. <laughs> um, they were persecuted as well for uh, their religion and um, as we get under the tree um, and we were just talking like how 
brave these people were, not only um, the priests, but also the congregation, the local villagers, they wanted mass and, you know, it was at any cost, really. Uh, the f it's just a fight for people, the fight people had to, to do, you know, yeah. back then. And even in today's times you know there's still uh dispute with religions and stuff like that yeah. and countries fighting war over is, is yeah a war is still going on you know you know and i mean i don't care you know it doesn't it doesn't bother me as a person uh what religion you follow you believe in what you believe as long as you've a good heart and uh you know a good person you know really what difference does it make but uh let's keep going so we're making our way back up under trees through brambles and stuff. But this place is just beautiful. A lot of people, as I said, still come here and uh, walk this little area. It's actually freezing today, guys. We're kind of doing this in between the showers. I don't know what bird that was. That was a strange bird. But just look at this. Isn't this beautiful? I mean, there's nothing like um, woodland and the colours and the trees and some fresh air in your lungs. Now, I have been here before, as I said, and I have found um, little campsites down here. Probably, maybe it was the summertime, I can't really remember, but they had little fires and stuff. So I was kind of thinking, well, that's a bit dangerous in here. We have another little opening area here. Let I have a look. A little bit of rubbish around as well. But it is strange that these areas, as I said, the pathway there, 99.9% .9 of the time, there, you know, there are no ferns growing, but yet there's so much all around. The pathway is basically clear of the ferns. Right, so we're on the road. And uh, you can just see there, it's a little humpback bridge. Now, I think after all the rain that we've had, it's probably going to be very murky. But I'll still show you the area um, where that poor priest hid and then shot dead. Um, there's the little, the little graveyard and ruins of a church in there as well. But you can just see the amount of water on the roads that we've had a lot of rain lately. Oh yeah, so I knew. Well, I didn't know, but I had it pretty well figured that uh, the water will be quite murky. But I can assure you that just there, there are stones and they are red to look at. And as I said, they say that the priest's blood lies on those stones. So this is the bridge that we're standing on. And just underneath the bridge this way is where he would have hid. And this is the, the stream then, or the river, that runs the whole way back up there, all the way up to where the mass rock is located. This, as I said, is known as the Bloody Bridge. And uh, as you can tell, the stones that are here, unfortunately, we can see, but these are not the ones that are covered in this red colour. And you can see that there, that none of these have that red colour to them. But if I can find a photo, I'll put it up. But I don't think there, there will be a photo of it. Um, I'm a little bit nervous to go down those steps because I know I'd probably fall on my face and we don't want that. So this is the little way you take in here. Now, uh, patterns are still actually held here and I think it's around August, so this place is always well looked after. And now I know we have a lot of, you know, long green grass here at the moment, but the majority of this time, this place is really well cared for. Um, this is, look at this, we have a row of six 
crosses. This is Elizabeth Clancy. Now, she was only 36 when she passed in 1922. We have a 1933, 82-year-old Daniel Clancy. And I would presume that these are all Clancy's. This is James Clancy. He was only 16 in 1909. These are all Clancy's. And Annie Clancy, she was only 11 when she died in 1915. We have another Annie Clancy beside her. She was 33 when she died in 1930. But the last cross is actually a Stafford. 1953, age 57. So let's just take a little walk around. Now, there was talks of a church that was burnt down by the, Crom uh, the Cromwellian forces. I don't think it's this one. I think this one was a little bit later than that. Um, the other one, there's nothing really to see, only rubble. And it's up near to the school. Now we do have, gosh, we do have headstones in there as well. But that's the ruins of the church. But let's just have a look at some of the headstones out here. And I might be able to get in over that wall there. Well, this one has some nice designs, actually. Oh, wow, beautiful. Now this could be, this is actually the man that we all adore, Jay Byrne. So you can see the crucifixion and the sun and the moon and the rain is starting, of course. This is actually, we were in hailstones, guys. 1807, aged 49. The body of Anne Doyle. And then there's also of her children. Lord of mercy on their souls and her husband, Nicholas Doyle, as well. 1831, I believe, but... Um, Anne herself passed away in, in 1807 and you can just see the detail there on that beautiful stone. Now I was talking to somebody and he says that Jay Byrne does not have a grave, um, that there is a story that he may have joined the 1798 rebellion where he would have fallen in the war and so he was left without a grave. Look at this beautiful one, surrounded by the holly. Wow, that's gorgeous. It's a dove. Look at the colour of the stone gone. That would have probably been... Is it white marble it was? It's Elizabeth Whelan. Look at the colour of it. Looks like she was only 19 years old. Just there. 1908. Wow, look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? We have another old cross here. John... Bowers Jr. Rest in peace. No date. Now, we're going to get caught in these hailstones. It's, it's really cold, guys. We have the shaking hands here and what would have been rails around it at one stage. This is 1908. Um, in memory of... Looks like RC. I don't. I don't know what that is. Binny, it looks like, but it's a B I N N I E. It's in it. Age twenty-seven, nineteen oh eight. Look at that. Right, there is a path here. I don't think it tends to go around in a circle, but we have a lovely boundary wall that runs along. And this little road here is actually quite busy. So with the weather the way it, it keeps coming and going, we won't stay too long. The ground is soaking wet. Wow, there is a, a headstone in here as well. Let's have a look at this one first. Thomas Doyle, who died August 1921, aged 48. And also, is it his son, who died the 25th of September, 18 or 1916, not quite sure. Age nine months, wow. 
So I presume that's 1916 there for his son. Little tiny headstone here. The feet are well wet now anyway. Wow, look at that. Erected by Mary Dunn, Sleda, in loving memory of her son, John. 1921 age. Is that 13? 23. 23. Oh, Love tiny that. little headstone. Yeah, it's Sacred Heart there at the top. So sad. We can just see the area, guys. It's, it is quite overgrown, but I can assure you that this place, they do come in and clean it off. This is a memory of Philip Merriman and his parents and brothers. Nothing else wrote there, but you can see it's in halves. It's after falling over. Um, such a pity, but I can see there as well that the ground has actually sank down. Now, this is an easier way to get into the ruins of the church. Richard Doyle here. 1974 and then in the corner we have Mary Doyle 1935 age 74 look at this one it's literally shattered isn't it 1870 aged 48 We've two here. Here lieth the body of Walter Power, who departed this life. November 17 something, 1756, aged 69 years. Also, his wife Mary Doyle, 1750. Now, he could have passed actually, it could be 1736 there. It's very hard to read it. Another one here in the corner. Just beside the the old window of the church itself. Thomas Harris of Pierce's Town, 1866, age 55, and also his wife Anne Harris, alias Bent, November 25th, 1866, age 60, their daughter, Mary Ann died young, also Patrick Harris, son of the above. Um, died the 8th of September, aged just 37, 1875, and his wife, Ellen Harris, 1924, aged 91, I believe. Wow. So I'm going to make my way back out. I don't think there's anything actually in here, let's just be sure. Now, there's one actually on the other side there, the little river. As I said, just runs along there. We'll get out maybe there before we leave as well. It's actually in a beautiful area, although it is quite a busy road. And that huge bend, it's actually, it's dangerous. You know, if you meet a car there, you're, if you're not going slow, it's not going to end well. There's a new cemetery only a couple of hundred yards up the road, but there's only about six or seven people buried there, isn't it? The, in the new one, oh, that's a brand new, yeah. yeah, there is a brand new. There's another um, cemetery here in this village as well. You look at the moss on the cross, isn't it crazy? Look, wow, what was that? Like little, like a little shield in the, in the cross there that's on the ground. This one, look at that. See the way the moss has just settled? It actually makes it really beautiful looking. Michael Murphy, age 71. 1924 aged, yeah, 71. That is beautiful. And what looks like another? Is that a headstone? Looks like it is. The tree has just completely grown around it. And possibly we have more in that there as well. That's the shaking hands we did already. This is Frank Fanning, March 1947, and Johanna, his wife, 1965. So obviously somebody does come there to tend that grave. So we make our way down the other side of the, the ruins of the church.
Now, really, I should put on the wellies, but I kind of didn't really think. As I said, I know this place is, is cared for. I just didn't think of the grass being so long. But then with all the weather, it's bound to have happened. This little one here. Affectionate remembrance of C Cecilia, is it? The beloved daughter of Edward and Elizabeth Adams, 1874. Died, born 1874, died 1870. No, sorry. Elizabeth Adams, born October the 25th, 1878 and died December the 10th, 1879. So you're talking probably just a year old. Then we have this beautiful... I believe it's an obelisk, is it? It is, look at that. Wow. Look at the designs on that one. That's beautiful, isn't it? Looks like it has either lost the top of it. It's the biggest one in here. It's the, the grandest one in here for sure. Let's see if we can read it. Of your charity, pray for the repose of the soul of Joseph Underwood, who died on the 20th of March, 1868, aged 37. He was for many years house steward to the Earl and Countess of Granard, who erected this monument to his memory in grateful remembrance of his long faithful services. Wow. He was only 37 though, but he could have worked. In those times, he could have been working from the time he was 14, you know. But uh, what a beautiful monument to put here for him we'll have to look up um granard so these are all sills michael sills loving memory of his father it was erected by michael for his father robert 1895 and his mother anne sills 1925 his brother lawrence 1903 thomas died 1910 his children mary 1923, Bridget interred in Murntown, um, and the above Michael himself, 1950, and his wife then Margaret followed um, a month later in 1950 as well, and he is also interred in Murntown. His brothers Matthew Liverpool, 1922, and Patrick Castle Finn, 1961, and we have a beautiful. Um, etching of our Lord there on this beautiful stone. So when we look just around here, you can see the bloody bridge. You can see the very black skies. There's definitely more cold weather to come. The bloody bridge, as I said, where that priest was hiding after saying mass and uh, shot dead for saying mass. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to think about now that this was all going on. And uh, I mean, sad, very, very sad. Right, so guys, so that's the end of today's little adventure out in the cold and the hailstones and we're going to go home now and get warmed up again but a, a beautiful story in the sense that their faith didn't stop them and um, spreading the good news of our lord and you know they still went on despite the fear of being executed and you know we've heard such stories of this before where priests and men and women were hung drawn and quartered for uh, their religion and you know as we discussed as well still it's not much better but uh, for now guys take care god bless and i'll talk to you all soon